All right, on this one, it's a pretty big piece. Uh, whatever I get out of it is what I get. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to go after a specific piece. Uh, six inches by four inches, <clears throat> or I'm not going to go after a specific type from this piece. Just whatever happens. I was trying to figure out what I was going to nap, and I don't know what I want to do. I got some requests, but I want to use different stone for those requests. I'm going to try out the new bopper. How's that? Oh, sweet. This is a lot like the, the other point I just did. It's the same type of stuff. So, yeah. Except it's not as wonky as the other stone. That's for sure. Nice. As you can see, I'm already banging this up really well. Yeah. Just those hits. Just those couple of hits really banged it up. It's raw stone, but it's not too bad as far as nappability. Yeah. I'm going to heat treat a bunch of this stuff, but I'll do it in different batches. I, gotta, I wrote a note to myself in, that I need to sort these out. The, stu the uh, bopper destroying stone, the, the worst ones in that video are going to need heat at least 500 degrees. Uh, some of the stone in the video won't need that much heat. But the worst of the stones in that video probably going to need 500 degrees or more to make them nappable. Reasonably nappable. They're all nappable, but gotta be reasonable. Yep. All right. Yeah, very nice. I had to practice. I had to practice my blade work too. I got a project coming up where I'm going to be making some blades. I might capture it on video if. If it's not too difficult. I'll wait till I get more stone. Before I start making some blades. You know blades off a core. Conical core type thing. Yeah, brand new bobber. So nice. Yep. Copper is nice. Do I like it better than the aluminum? I think I like it better because it's weighted. It's front weighted. So it does a lot of the work for me. Yeah. But as far as grabbing onto the stone, the aluminum works really well too. It's just not weighted like this one. I suppose if I were to add some steel into the aluminum like drill a hole in the aluminum and then insert some steel to weigh it down that might work really well as a bopper where you swing it because uh, my aluminum I just hold it like this I don't swing I just hit on the flat with this one I'm hitting on the round and I'm swinging and gouging yeah I'm not hitting on the flat with this. Gouging is a lot more aggressive on the edge. But it has a lot of similarities to the indirect percussion. This is not bad actually. This material is a little bit better than the, the other stone. Yep.
Yeah, it naps really well actually. It's a hard spot. What did I say it was? Six by four. Six by four inches. I've already lost a lot of width. Feel that on my finger, these fast strikes. Let's see. Mm. Okay, enough, enough fun with the bopper. I'm losing a lot of material. Okay. Let's see, it's a two and three quarter by five. So, yeah, lost quite a bit of material, but that was fun. I'm gonna separate these. Hold on. Clean up a little bit before I go to the next stage. Come on. All right, I don't need to heat treat these. They'll nap just fine in the raw state.
Okay. So I have at least two. I can make a big barbed point. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I'm losing more off the length because I want it to be wider at the base. Okay, so yeah. Very nice, very nice stuff. Or it's just the, the new quality of the bopper is making it easy. Let's see. I'm getting rid of all the, the burrs that are sticking out for the next time. All right. Okay, so... Yeah, I can make a barbed point. One of those barbed marshals or a barbed pedernalis. Yeah. Do some long barbs again. Those are always fun. Yeah, so it'll be pretty straightforward to get this thin down. Put in some barbs.
Yep. Yeah, I'm going to save some of that bold flaking toward the end. But I can't do too much of it toward the end because it'll be too delicate. See, like these bold flakes on the blade, I want to save those, most of those, for the end because I think that's how they were made. Okay, yeah, I had to leave myself a little bit of thickness on the blade so that I can get those bold flakes at the end. Okay. So I'm going to do the stem and the barbs first. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just thinning down the base here. A little bit crackly right there. Too bad. Okay, still thinning down the base, almost there. Thinning down the stem and barb area also. Okay, I think that's, I hope that's thin enough. So that, so that I don't have any trouble notching. A little bit too over overzealous right there. Okay, so what is the ratio? Let's say it's 60 millimeter by, by seven. All 
right? You can't see. It's like, well, 6 by 60 would be 10 to 1, so it's like a 9 to 1. So I got it down to a 9 to 1 for thinness down there, so I shouldn't have any trouble with the notching. The only thing later on that might give me trouble is this little island that's developing right there, but I should be able to knock that away when I start thinning the blade later on. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the stem and barbs. Okay. I'll regularize everything first with pressure so I don't have to do this to the barb later on. Doing this first requires a little bit of an imagination. I gotta imagine what it's gonna look like already so that I know how much to thin this down because a lot of times I forget. Right, I don't forget, I just don't thin it down first on the edges. And I'm I'm saying to myself, I should have thinned the edges down earlier. But it's hard to imagine how it's gonna look. That's why I don't do it a lot of times. But I gotta imagine where the future barbs are gonna be, how thin I want them, and where they're gonna transition to the blade. Where do I stop? Where do I stop the barb? I think I'm already far enough up the side of the blade to stop here. After this, I'm going to sleep. I'm already, my eyes are already tired. So. Going to sleep after this, or I'll just not nap. Yeah, do something else. Okay, so that was the last, the last boogery spot. This area might give me trouble later. This little area right here, it's got some concrete in it. Yeah. Let's see. Almost there. I 
So I, I'm just going to get the edges, the edges thin enough so that all I got to do now after I put in the barbs is just sharpen. If I get the edges thin enough, all that's left is just sharpening. And that just takes a few little pressure flakes. I don't have to push hard. Because right now I'm, I'm thinning also. All right, so that's the... That is everything ready for the the barbs to go in. Okay. Okay, so I'm judging how wide the stem is going to be. It cannot be wider than an inch. So yeah, right there. It can be wider than an inch, but I don't want it to be. Let's put it that way. All right. Hopefully this will, won't take me as long as the other one when, that had the large barbs. Because I've already got a feel for how it should look when I'm starting out. So yeah, the more of these that I do, the easier it gets. So it's going to be a pattern now, so it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more narrow than a um, Marshall.
So it's going to be a contracting stem pedernalis with long barbs. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm looking at the book, and there's not one that with really long barbs in the book, but I'm going to put long barbs on this one. Hitting the wrong side there. There we go. Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to do these barbs more quickly. We're quickly in with fewer flakes. I like to look at the bold flaking. Those of you, those of you who have been watching the channel, they, you know that already. Okay. I like the uh, the bold flakes. Not too many flakes. Just just barely enough. Okay. I just want to make sure I don't have to come back and thin down the barbs later. Okay. Oh. All right. I'm bending the nail on this one. Let's see. So I'm going to use the file and stuff just in case and punch out some good flakes with the cheater tool and then continue with the regular pressure flaker. Yeah. Although that one should have gone longer. Yeah. 
I just need the cheater tool to pop those out. Much easier to pop those out with the cheater tool than to try to pressure flick those. I think I know why they favored one side and then the other because it's hard to get in there sometimes. If you just pressure flake in the direction where it's easier, you can see that they favored one side or the other. The side that was easier, I guess they were. See, it's easier for me to press on the barbs from this direction in this direction instead of trying to go in there from here like this <clears throat> flip it over that way so uh, but I'm, I'm pressure flicking it both ways because I just want it to look a little bit <clears throat> more symmetrical yeah <clears throat> So that stem, I want to make that stem pretty long, so I still got a ways to go. I just gotta make sure I don't crack the bottom of that notch. Thirty-eight minutes. Should I just keep going? Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. I really don't like having to upload three separate videos. much easier to just upload one even though it might be easier for you guys to watch three shorter separate videos all right this is where I can't be goofing around too much I gotta focus on Pressure flaking this just right. If I'm going to be pressure flaking, I can't. I can't be stalling it just because I'm in a rush. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Borrowed some from this side here. Okay. See, I'm, I'm crushing it down at the bottom, and I shouldn't be because I need a nice bulb to seat the tool into. Have a nice 
bulb I can see I'm having to use the very edge of that bulb luckily it's good material so it's kind of forgiving you see it's it's not perfect I'm kind of creating some scoop outs that I don't want Yeah, I want them like that. I don't want any scoop outs. I have scoop outs on the other side. And the lower, the lower that edge is inside the the bottom of the notch, the better. If it's up too high. I run the risk of blowing away that barb. See, because it punches out too much. If the if the edge of the you know inside the notch, if that is not below center line, it pops out a really big pop out, and it could just go zip right across the barb. That one was good. It did not do anything bad, but that's what I mean about. Popping out something too big. If the platform up here, or if the striking area is too too high, so you got to lower it down low for the next pop out. I'm going to hit the barb right here a little bit. There's a little thick spot there. Just a little tap. It is very dicey to use the cheater tool on the barb. But it's, it's from that angle that I have a hard time getting the pressure flaker in, so I'm going to use the cheater tool. Yep, just like that. Okay. Now if I start crunching and breaking the and cracking the bottom of that notch, I gotta stop and figure out how to fix it. I haven't done it yet, but if I if I start cracking the bottom of that notch, I gotta back off and see what I can do because I can already see that there's some cracking there. Let's see what happens. Shouldn't be a big deal. Let's see. Let's see. I need to. I do need to get the pressure flaker in there just to clean it up a little bit.
Yeah, before that stem gets too long, I want to. I'm going to fix the bottom here. Hold on. So it won't be so thick. All right, now I got to get back to this notch. <clears throat> I'm going to use the file to clean it up since the pressure flaker I wasn't able to clean up that stall with the pressure flaker I was pushing down this way I think and I just I just made it worse so I'll put a better angle in there with the file. Can you see? It's... I'm having a lot of issues with the blurriness. Watching becomes more critical. I gotta make sure that that edge is good on the cheater tool on the nacho. Okay, I have to punch out a good flake. It's gonna seat well and not slip. Yeah, that's not it. not it okay I can just you know uh, crunch it in there and keep going but I want a good pop out Not just not just any old pop out on a good pop out flake okay yeah all righty Oh, well. I seem to be doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, the bottom of that is not ideal. It's all crunchy. I can't have it all crunchy like that and get a good pop out on the other side. Just like that. I think I might do a better job just pressure flaking it with the cheater tool instead of getting the yeah instead of getting the pressure flaker out. It's easier with the pressure flaker because this is a little bit awkward doing it with the, the notching tool, the natural matic. It was a thick spot on the side there. So just a slight tap and I got it out. Okay. A little bit further to go on the notching. And it gets critical, so I'm going to use the file to, to cheat. Make sure that angle is just right for the next pop-out.
even though I probably don't need to file it. I'm just going to make double sure. Doubly sure. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. See, there's a bump in the barb right there, so I might be able to tap that out with the notch matic Hold on. Nope. I'll get it later. Or I'll just leave it. If I think it's too delicate, I'll just leave it. Let's see. Before that notch gets any... I mean, before that barb gets any longer... Same issue with the trying to get it from that side. Let's see. I'm going to make sure I don't put any undue stress on that barb because this is an awkward position. Let's see. Okay. I probably shouldn't worry about it because worry about it too much and it's not going to be worth it. But see, I don't like that bump on the, on the barb right there. Okay, that's good enough. Is that loose? No. Nope. I'm widening that notch so that I can get further in. Still not done. I still got to go deeper on the notches.
that was kind of good some of the some of that notch flake went up into the middle there and took some of that out okay It's got to be perfect. Symmetrical enough, but the bottom of the notches, yeah, it looks okay. Just don't want the bottom of the notch to look crushed, so we'll see what we can do. It's or it's looking crushed right now. I mean, some of the artifacts had him crushed like that, but I don't. Okay, so yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to widen the bottom of the notches, though. Yeah, I don't remember seeing any of them like this. So... There's usually some widening of the notch... On a lot of these, and which is understandable because as you get further in, it's harder and harder to notch. So, if you keep the bottom of the notch wide, you can keep going much easier. I'm just spoiled by the cheater tool.
Trying to uncrunch that, but I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Just want to make sure there's no cracks at the bottom of that notch because when I start hitting the blade, any crack in there will open up and go across. Any little crack. And there is a, there is a crack in there. Right there. And it got a little crunchy. So I'm a little bit worried. Let's see. But it, it might be thick enough. I don't have to, I don't have to worry. Yeah. So how do I want these notches to look? Um, do I change them now? If I want them to look different than this, I think I want to hollow out the inside a little bit more so that they, they're they not convex on the inside. I want them to be a little concave on the inside. But I'll do that later. Right or no? Let me see. I should do that now. Yeah. Because if I do it later, it might be too thin up in this area. I might, you know, because I'm going to be thinning the blade. If I thin the blade too far down into the notch, and then I try to modify the blades. Hold on. If I hit the side to cause a flake to go too far toward the barb and then try to enlarge the inside of that notch on the inside of the barb, I could snap it across there. So if I do it now, it might be better. Yep. Yep. I'm using a, the copper this time for the pressure flaker to see if that works better. I forgot that I had a copper pressure flaker sitting over there. The reason why that makes a difference is because I can grab the edge easy. But as it gets further in, I have a hard time getting to that edge. Okay.
Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'll clean up the edge a little bit so I can do some percussion flakes. I'm gonna move the point that way a little bit too.
there it goes. So just go over broke. See what I can do. Lost one of the bars. See how far I can go with it. So I got a crack right there. Yeah. Okay, so that that's uh This is probably where I'm going to delete this video. Yeah. To get thin and long barbs, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is, on the next one, start the barbs, thin the blade, and then finish the barbs. You know, start the notches. In other words, halfway up, then thin the blade, and then finish the, no the notches and the barbs. Yeah. Let's see if I can thin this down and not lose the other barb. So halfway, halfway with the notches and barbs, then thin the blade, then finish the, the notches and barbs. Okay. Let's see if I can see if I can do what they do and, and run a flake all the way across there. Well, almost. So I can run I can run flakes across the blades at the late stage without losing that barb. So but I think it'd be safe just to go halfway, then thin the blade, and then finish. Yeah. Where is the rest? Where is that barb? Let's see. I don't see it. I will find it in a minute, or in a little while. I'll look for it. Anyway, it'll go into the brooks and bifaces. Still didn't thin this side exactly the way I wanted. Still very steppy. It didn't have enough meat on it. There's a crack right there. So, yeah, you're going to improve the thinning of the blade. Of course, it's not that cooperative as a material, but it's all right. Let's see. Hmm. 
Let's see how deep that crack goes right here. Doesn't go that far, but it's in there. This crack right here. So more careful thinning of the blade. Uh, the thinness here, the width to thickness ratio down here was fine to start with. It's just the blade I got to work on. The, the um, planning of the final thinning. Although I can run flakes across where they used to run them with the thinness that I had. It's just, it wasn't quite right for this material or something. I get the, I got the step pressure. All right. There's no way I could have, I don't think I could run another flake into there. It's very steppy. All right. Some of those can be uh, flicked out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what is the width to thickness ratio on this blade? Let's say it's 55 right there. And it's a seven, seven to one. Seven to one across here. So if I keep it at six to one, which is a little bit thicker, I think I, I can be, I can do better on the blade by making it just a little thicker. And that will probably also help with the strength of the barbs right there. But you won't be able to go very far on the notching if I make it thicker there. So we shall see on the next one. All right. Just get a thumbnail shot. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, that's it.